Hello, hello everyone. Bear with me as I get Lauren pulled in here. Just one moment. Hopefully everyone can hear me all right. All right, so this is my Instagram live as well, as apparently is a, a common theme among us today. So glad to see you all here with us. Um, I think, oh, hey, Lauren. Hello. Welcome. Uh, it's so good to see you. Um, just let us know in the chat, guys, if you can hear us okay, if you can't, or if you have any other, uh, any questions for either Lauren or I. Oh, wonderful. Sounds good. Thanks, Margo. Um, so as said earlier, I'm Gabby Darden. I did my amicus placement in 2019 um, in Florida. And as you from, can probably tell from my accent, I am not British, unlike the uh, rest of Mar. Oh, I think we've lost Lauren. Oh, just a moment, guys. Let's try to pull her back in here. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. but It's quite all right. I was just giving a little short. It was a couple of minutes behind, so I had to rewatch me leaving. Oh, my. <laughs> it's okay. Yes, well, everyone, this is Lauren Bates Brown Swords. If you'd like to tell everyone a little bit about yourself and your involvement with Amicus. Yes, hi, everyone. Um, so... I don't know what Gabby exactly said, but first became involved with Amicus during my GDL and Gabby and I actually did the GDL together and we went and did the Amicus training together. I think um, for both of us, I remember sitting there thinking um, we definitely need to get involved some way or another. So I only just got involved at uh, the end of 2020 and I did a US placement but remote. I had originally planned for about a year, really wanted to get out there and do a physical placement but obviously because of COVID we weren't able to do that but was still 100% worthwhile and I would absolutely recommend that anyone and everyone should definitely get involved. So that explains my involvement so Gabby you've got a very interesting story why don't you say how you kind of got involved and now what you're doing yeah so um I as Lauren said we met on the GDL there in Oxford um after my undergrad um in Tennessee back in the U.S. which is where I'm originally from I um yeah decided after studying criminal justice and psychology that I was going to move away to England and be a um, focus in international human rights law and never come back to the US basically was my plan at that time. Um, and little did I know um, I was going to get involved with Amicus and you know, develop this passion to want to come back to the US and work on um, death penalty cases. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of how a little bit <laughs> short version of how I ended up um, here with Amicus and actually at the time, um, just going to the Amicus training, that was my first exposure to the organization and the work that's done. And, you know, I had no idea about the area of mitigation at this time. Um, you know, my background had been in, you know, psychology and social work and, you know, various areas of criminal justice and the legal system before, but I had, you know, never really had that comprehensive exposure to mitigation um, that I did then um, at the first amicus training that I went to and listening to Sunny and Peter and just that, you know, first weekend, um, I knew that that was the area that I wanted to further pursue. And now that's what I'm doing. Um, so after my amicus US placement, which I did in Florida, um, I decided, yeah, instead of going the courtroom law route, that I was going to become a mitigation specialist and investigator instead. And that's currently, yeah, now what I'm on the path to doing. And I work for the public defender's office. Um, just, yeah, still currently actually working on the, um, the initial case that I came here on my placement working on in 2019. So that's been a really interesting uh, experience all the way around. So, yeah. Um, 
so the difference as well, though, I would say with our placement, you know, you did remote um, mm -hmm. and I was doing, I guess, well, actually, I've had a little bit mixture of both, um, you know, because obviously I was working. It was the end of 2019 when I first started my placement um, and had just decided to stay and not go back to England um, and then COVID and we started working remote. But a lot of the work that I was doing um, before we went remote for the pandemic was, um, you know, assisting with uh, mitigation uh, interviews um, and which, by the way, actually, you know, maybe we should pause right there for a moment and talk a little bit about what mitigation is. Um, do you want to address that at all or do you want me to I think you go into that? What you do now. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So okay. Yeah. yeah so just about explaining what mitigation is and why it is so important, particularly with death penalty cases. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's one of yeah the most vital components of the work that we do. Um, and mitigation essentially boils down to being the why. Um, you know, there's so much about, you know, a case that or in all cases in our clients' lives that, you know, in general, all of us that contribute to the the people that we are today. Um, and it's no different, you know, with our clients and everything that they have been through, you know, in their life, good and bad, you know, all the way around, um, you know, traumatic experiences, positive experience, all contribute, um, you know, to then the person that they, you know, were at the time of, you know, the alleged crime, you know, occurring, or, you know, now, because sometimes, you know, in the post appeal, um, in habeas cases, it's, you know, many, many years later, um, and how those things have shaped them and had an impact on, um, you know, how we got to where we are today. And it's really just boils down to humanizing our clients, um, and not just humanizing them, you know, for the per our purposes of, you know, interaction and, um, you know, gathering, um, case materials, but also humanizing them for the, um, the attorneys that are working on the case that um, don't aren't able to have the time and ability, um, you know, to develop the as the kind of relationship that you do end up, you know, as a mitigation invest investigator, um, simply, you know, because our the attorneys, they're extremely busy, there's so many components to a capital case. Um, and you know, there's just things like that, building the rapport with not only your clients, but also their families um, and other uh, potential mitigation witnesses uh, for the penalty phase that, you know, some of those things you're not going to be able to initially, you know, learn and gather information, you know, regarding the various experiences that the clients have been through, um, you know, whether that's adverse childhood experiences, um, just things, you know, that you may not just be as inclined to, you know, just immediately tell your attorney. Um, so that's a critical part of, you know, what a mitigation specialist does as well that brings in that more social worker aspect. Um, but then you're also investigating, um, you know, their, not only their lives, but also, you know, mitigation. We go three generations back, you know, to their, you know, parents and grandparents. And, you know, all of those things are so integral to learning, you know, someone's why and how they got to where they are. And ultimately, you know, that's, you could go into a lot other, lot more other areas of that, and I'm sure you will. Um, and you absolutely will if you continue to do the amicus trainings, um, which I strongly encourage anyone and everyone who has any vague interest in this area of law to do. Um, but yeah, the, definitely the training is brilliant, just for even getting an overview of how different legal systems work and how it is different to the UK and how it is what those differences fundamentally mean when it comes down to an individual and I think that's why it's just important to do the training and actually really take comprehensive notes because you never know when you're going to need it um, especially if you do go on to do a US placement. Um, Gabby I wanted to ask you um, why do you think people in the UK should care about the death penalty in the US? Because you're a US mm. citizen and then you came here and then you went back. Yeah, yeah. And for me, a lot of that at first, you know, also had to do with, um, you know, I've gr I grew up around the US legal system, you know, and thought that I knew like the ins and outs of it and such. Um, but being able to, while I was in the UK, step back and look at it from a different perspective, um, just completely, you know, changed my outlook. But um, I think it's so important for, um, you know, as not just UK, you know, but all around the world, um, for people to get more involved in this kind of work, because 
you know, as Martin Luther King says, um, you know, any threat to justice or a threat to justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Um, and so, you know, I think that that really, you know, brings it all together right there about why we should be so, um, you know, adamant about, you know, being advocates in this area. Um, and also, you know, you never know, um, you know, even if it's just one case that you end up or just one client that you end up interacting with, like on your placement, you know, that, that one person, that's one life that you, you know, are playing a role in, you know, affecting. Um, so I think that it's, it's really important all the way around. Um, I think we have a question. Mm hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah, Sunny. Welcome. It's so nice to see you. Yes, Sunny, you were my uh, complete inspiration that first night um, of listening to the amicus training and just hearing your story. And man, I, I don't even know how to put into words the feelings that like I felt and just you know, everything that you went through. And I'm so glad that you are able to share your story with us and with, you know, everyone that gets involved in this this training. I do encourage you all, um, if you have not read Stolen Time, um, to go look on the Amicus um, website and look into that really good book that, um, yeah, so that goes into Sonny and um, Peter's experiences. I think so, um, are there any I was just gonna say, well, what stayed with me was when Sonny said that from her experience with all death penalty cases, the people that are eventually exonerated, there's no way they could have could have been exonerated if it wasn't for people volunteering and it is sad that these criminal justice not just in the us but even in the uk is underfunded which means that just mm. is that you can't rely on the state anymore and we have to have volunteers especially when it is fundamentally someone's life but you were about to mention books gabby mm -hmm. so Sonny's book is good but also um Death Row, The Final Minutes by Michelle Lyons mm. is a brilliant book. And that for me, I read before I did the Amicus training. And she explores kind of the different sides as she originally was an advocate for the death penalty. And then through her experience of being a journalist uh, at, I think it was Huntsville Prison in Texas, she realized that it was just wrong. It didn't deter, it didn't, um, it discriminates. It's used as a political tool. And they were all the reasons why she then changed her mind and became an advocate for abolishing the death penalty. So that's another brilliant book. I'd say just reading around and you see how passionate people are because they know that they are fundamentally doing something and working towards abolishing something that really should not be um, happening. There's, there's, no, there's no economical reasons for it. it. It's not a deterrent, like I said. And, and ultimately, it's, it's irreversible. It's final. If it's a mistake, mm -hmm. you can't go back and have that person live again. Um, and Sunny spoke about how, I think it was her partner, it later came to light after he was sadly executed that he was innocent. And I think just hearing one of those stories is enough for you to be inspired mm -hmm. to get involved. So... Perhaps, Gabby, what might be helpful is if we say, how can you get involved and what steps are, are good and, and what things you can do? Yeah, I think um, what is really, uh, and I think we're running short on time here in just a couple minutes, yeah. but um, briefly, definitely explore the remote um, and casework options because that's one of the, uh, I don't know if good is necessarily the right word, but, you know, positive things that did come out of the pandemic is the reach mm -hmm. that, you know, we're able to have now. And, um, you know, people literally from all over the world that are able to assist, um, you know, in these cases. Um, and that could, you know, that could be the work that you could be doing um, that ultimately is going to contribute to hopefully saving someone's life. Mm -hmm. um, so just, you know, look into, you know, what your, whatever city you're in, um, you know, even getting involved as a student rep, um, you know, or reaching out to those people at your schools that are the amicus student reps. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, you know, I'm sure, you know, they would be happy to, you know, answer any questions that you may have. Any of us, any amicus alumni, um, any amicus staff, we are all always here to answer, you know, any questions and support you. Um, and that's how we get, you know, keep going forward and such ourselves, you know, the support network that we have um, within this organization. So mm -hmm. that's, that's what I would recommend. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, I was just gonna say everyone is really happy to help if you reach out. 
um, attend the training. I would say follow the Instagram page and Twitter because often there's little volunteer things which come up. Um, if you can't save for a US placement, because they are very expensive, absolutely look to seeing if you can do it in London or do it remote. Any small thing that you do is actually, you learn a lot from it and you are benefiting and helping people who are around, under the lawyers under huge amounts of stress um, in the US just trying to shift through the workload. So it is absolutely mm -hmm. something that you can do where you're actually making a difference. Absolutely. Um, Libby Lou, I believe, has asked a question about how we can get involved in amicus before university, so at like A-levels and such. Um, I think that that um, is something definitely um, Margot a little later on can hit on a bit more, I think, in one of the later sessions. Um, but definitely, you know, just reiterating what we just said, just, you know, reaching out, you know, to those that are involved around you. That's, that's the, you know, best starting place. So, thanks so much. Oh, you try. You were trying to end up. Yeah, no, thinking. sorry. I was gonna say, yeah. I think, um, I think we're, yeah, running short on time here a little bit. But is there any final thing you want to hit before we? I was just gonna answer the question and say, um, reading any of the books that Gabby and I recommended, and also, um, you could see if you could do an assembly at your school just to increase the reach and, and knowledge of how capital offences like in punishments used. Um, in the US, that was all I was gonna recommend. But yes, Gabby, you were gonna wrap things up. Um, I was, yeah. Um, Diana said we actually may have a couple of minutes. So um, Margot has said that um, they have done school talks in the past, so that could be an option, um, you know, with yeah. your local school and such. So yeah, reach out for sure um, if that's something that you wish to get involved in and, you know, especially want to get others involved in as well. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, and if not, you know, continue to, yeah, add to that if you wish. Um, you can also sign uh, petitions, not just amicus that gets involved in the death penalty, but I know that Amnesty does petitions to um, campaign against executions which are coming up. I think just raising any kind of media awareness is super important. We saw that with, um, in the US, um, Quinton Jones, who was executed, there was no media presence at all when he was there. You can tell that um, countries are feeling increasingly ashamed to be using the death penalty, and that's why they're trying to hide it. So if you can increase awareness around that, you're beginning to solve that issue. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a really good point. Really good point and good um, steps there that, again, anyone, you know, can start to take now, even if you haven't, you know, done your law degree and such yet. Um, there are definitely, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for events to support or run a fundraiser at your school. Definitely. I know throughout the year um, we are doing virtual um, outside of the trainings as well. We have other events like this that we've done today. Um, and yeah, that'll be just keep an eye out on your, on the, amicus pages and there'll be more information throughout the year regarding those opportunities so again thank you so much for joining me lauren and yeah um nice thank you for the work that you're doing nice to see you as well um i think we're going to hop off here now um but feel free to continue to reach out throughout the day about any questions that you guys have thank you bye, bye.